How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here, and have you ever seen one of these before? Not Kings of the Beach for the NES, although for being a sports game, it's actually a really, really fun game. I'm talking about that purple triangle down there, especially if you've lived in the Northwest, especially if you lived in Eastern Washington, perhaps, maybe even specifically Yakima, Washington. Well, that was the town I grew up in. And if you're curious about that purple triangle, and you've seen them before, maybe more than once, I know where they're from. And I'm going to tell you where they're from in this video. It's going to be a super quick video, though, because um, I'm not going to go into the whole the detail. I'm not going to stretch it. I'm not going to stretch this video out for 10 minutes to let you know that these purple triangles came from a store, a rental store back in the day. All right. <laughs> but I will tell you a quick story anyway. Um, we had a place called Lincoln Video, ironically, on Washington Avenue. We have, we have a Lincoln Avenue as well in Yakima, Washington. I believe maybe Lincoln Video was on Lincoln Avenue and then moved to 3rd and Washington right behind the post office. I'm not exactly sure. I had a friend in the 8th uh, grade. His name was Robert. And um, he told me about Lincoln Video. Now, imagine if you will, you are 12 years old, have an insane passion for video games. You don't have the finances, the money, you know, you, you can't just be asking your parents for money all the time for video games. You could rent them sometimes from a lot of different places in town, but even that adds up after a while. So maybe you'll be lucky and be able to rent a game, sometimes luckily two games or something like that on the weekend, and that's about it. You're not buying any games anytime soon. Christmas, birthday, that's pretty much it, especially if you don't have a paper route or something like that. Well, Lincoln Video, here's what I loved about Lincoln Video, is you took your game. Let's say Kings of the Beach, since I'm already holding on to it. I have Kings of the Beach. It's mine. I own it. I'm done with it. I don't need it anymore. I want to play something else. I want to play literally anything else. So what people would do for Lincoln Video, and there was a video store, too. You could rent videotapes, movies. They had games for rent there, too. But they had a little cabinet right at the front that had a bunch of Nintendo games in it. Those were the games for trade. It was a video store in town that traded Nintendo games. I've never heard of this before. I've never heard of it since. It wasn't like you would sell them to them and they'd give you cash back and you use that money to buy something else. You would literally trade. Now, when I first went there, it was a straight trade. My Kings of the Beach for your Batman. My Kings of the Beach for your... I'm trying to think of another game that came out around that time. Uh, Adventure Island 2. Or something like that. You know, it just it didn't matter. Um, there there was no value back in these days. There was no optimal like you know if you have if you have Mario three that'll get you five games. And there was nothing like that. You could literally trade in Friday the Thirteenth for Mario three, you know, or or whatever the case may be. Um, that was great. So once I learned about that, and again. My mom's legally blind. She can't drive. My dad can drive, but he was a school teacher and he uh, taught music lessons after school. And he, uh, back in the days when there would be live bands playing in bars, he'd do a lot of bar gigs. Uh, he, he's, he's, a, he's an entertaining musician. So he would do bar gigs. He would do uh, weddings, funerals. I mean, you name it. He, he would say, serenade uh, proposals on the weekend. So asking for him for rides wasn't going to happen. I could take the local bus or I could walk. More often than not, I would walk. I got my long ass legs. I'd walk. It was a few miles, I think, but it didn't bother me. And it was also during the time, you know, I, I didn't have any fear of being kidnapped or anything like that. <laughs> so I'd grab literally like a brown paper sack that had two or three games in it. Or whatever, you know, I'd be like Russian Attack, Karate Champ, Kings of the Beach. And I'd be like, I don't care what they are so long as they're three new games. And I'd come back with, I remember Batman was one of the games, one of the times. Um, but then it might be something like uh, Cybernator. Or it might be something like Dino Wars. Not bad, but uh, once you play through them, you're like, okay, I can I can trade them for something else. So then the very next week, I would bring back Dino Wars and then get, like, Godzilla for the NES. Where the Purple Triangle comes from is every game that came through their store, they would index it with that Purple Triangle. Now, you could bring it back with the Purple Triangle. No big deal. But just every new game that came in, they would mark it with a purple, and it was always purple. It was never red, it was never blue. It was always purple. So if you ever see these purple triangles, unless someone else was marking them themselves, coincidentally with purple, um, if you ever see a purple triangle around, specifically the Northwest, even more so Eastern Washington, even more so Yakima, Washington, 
if you ever see these purple triangles, it's because it probably passed through Lincoln Video, and more often than not, probably on my hands too, because I was there, <sighs> I mean, min minimum once a month, but more often than not, about every weekend. In lieu of renting, if I was renting a game, that would be one thing. But if I wasn't renting any games that weekend, chances were I'm just taking, and I, I, that's why I, that's how I got around back in the day, playing a lot of games, just whatever came through. I didn't care. I'd never even heard of it. Let's check it out, see if I like it. Um, and then the ones I really, really did like, like I said, I lucked out several times. I would keep those ones. But then I'd always find other games that I could trade in, and go from there too. So, and, and it took a long time for me to finally just say, okay, I'm not trading any more games because it was just a straight, like I said, a straight trade. That was just, and I, oh, I didn't, I didn't mention this either. It was a straight trade for the first, I want to say it wasn't very long, like four months or so. And then they constituted the, um, the fee, $1. So then it was like, my Kings of the Beach, plus one dollar, no taxes or anything. Um, here's Kings of the Beach, here's a dollar. I will gladly take your uh, Dr. Chaos. You know, here's Dr. Chaos and a dollar. Uh, please hand me uh, Metal Gear. You know, something like that. I just thought it was cool. I thought it was interesting. I, I don't see these as often anymore, but every once in a while in the Northwest, you might see a game with a purple triangle. And when you do, you'd be like, oh, Lincoln Video. And if you do, let me know in the comments or if you happen to see one or if you happen to have one. Um, I, I never I never wrote my names on the backs of them or anything like that. So I, I'm, I'm not as lucky to find my own games. I actually have a friend who wrote his name on the back, <laughs> sold it or traded it off or whatever, and then years later found it. I'm not that lucky. But if you ever find one with a purple triangle on it, uh, let me know in the comments or, just, or hit me up on Twitter. It's like, oh, dude, I found another one with the purple triangle. I found it in a you know, Longview, Washington or something like that. Man, I'd love to hear about that. I, did, I think it's super interesting and super cool. And I thank you for watching. This is, like I said, this actually went on a lot longer than I thought it was going to go on. Um, but just remember, just reminiscing, going there all the time with my friends. Um, they had more than Nintendo. Nintendo games were the, and I should point that out too, Nintendo games were the only games that you could trade um, straight across. They did have other games for sale. Like you could buy, like they had, I remember they had Genesis games for sale. I remember specifically I bought um, the M1 Abrams uh, tank game for the Sega Genesis. And I bought it for like 10 bucks or something like that. Um, but they didn't do the, they didn't trade for Genesis games. They only traded uh, NES games. Um, near the end, before they closed, they were still kind of around. It wasn't exactly the same anymore. They did have TurboGrafx-16 games, which I thought was great because I had a TurboGrafx-16 when I was growing up. And I was able to get the games there for pretty cheap. I remember I bought Parasol Stars there for 15 bucks. Um, which was all the money I had, I think, <laughs> at the time. Um, you know, but near near the end there, um, you know, I don't I don't think they had the trade in thing anymore, unfortunately. Um, I don't know, but it was it was it was a fun time and a cool ordeal, and no no way would anyone do that anymore, especially when there's no value attached, just a straight trade for literally any game for literally any other game until. One of the last few times I went in there, they were no longer taking in uh, WrestleMania, like from LDN. They were no longer taking in, uh, I think it was NFL football. Not 10-year fight, but like NFL. It was like specifically NFL and like specifically baseball, I think, uh, because they had way too many of them and, and just cause, just, you know, rightfully so. So um, I promised myself it wouldn't be a 10-minute video. So before we even get to the nine-minute mark, I will say thank you for watching and I appreciate your time and attention. And um, just what a, what a fun, thanks for walking down memory lane.